So in this video, we'll talk about the hip and the pain surrounding that area. So let's draw a hip joint right here. So if the patient comes with anterior hip pain, you have to think about two types of pain. Now, both of them will be chronic, and the patient will describe it as diffuse, deep, and when you examine the patient, it will be worse with internal rotation. Now, the next step will be look at the risk factors. Does the patient have risk factors? If they do, then this is osteonecrosis. If they don't, then it's osteoarthritis. And the risk factors we are talking about here is use of steroids and if the patient has a history of SLE. So remember, osteoarthritis and osteonecrosis in adults can present clinically in a very similar way and risk factors can hint you or give you a big hint towards differentiating them. Now the next step will be you need to do an imaging just to rule out or rule in other diseases. And the first line always going to be x-ray. Although MRI is the modality of choice to diagnose osteonecrosis, you still have to start with an X-ray. Now let's move on and talk about anterolateral pain. Not many differentials here. And the main one is going to be the patient will mention that they have tender area on the anterolateral side and they will have pain whenever they sleep on that side then you have to think about trochanteric bursitis. Now next we'll talk about an important differential in hip pain. And the patient can present actually with back pain and sometimes they present only with hip pain. And here we are talking about nerve-like pain where the patient as well might mention weakness which is a very big hint to differentiate this type of pain from other type of pains. And here we're talking about nerve impingement and two causes for that, disc herniation or the patient has vertebral arthritis causing compression on the nerves. Now, you can differentiate between them actually. Disc herniation usually can extend to the foot while the vertebral arthritis nerve impingement pain usually does not extend beyond the thighs. Now, the last pain we'll talk about is going to be in this area here. This is the anterior lateral part of the thigh. And the patient will come and say, well, I have this nerve pain and it's burning. And if you examine them and ask them to do a valsalva maneuver, that pain can also get worse. Now, you have to think about zoster because we're talking about the nerve pain, obviously. But there's another differential that you have to keep in your mind, which is going to be myralgia paresthesia where you have compression on the lateral femoral cutaneous nerve which supplies the anterior lateral part of the thigh. Now, some distinguishing features. In zoster, you will have tenderness on palpation, while in myralgia, you won't have that. In zoster, you will have the vesicular rash, the typical rash, while in myralgia paresthesia only is going to be redness. And that's what you need to know. Hope you guys learned something. See you in the next one.